Welcome, and uh, this is Stephanie Bachmann-Mattei with the NVC Academy, and today I have the exquisite pleasure of being on the call with uh, Dr. Daniel Siegel. Dr. Siegel, welcome. Nice to meet you and see you again in person on this on <laughs> yes. this uh, technological connection. Thank you, Dr. Siegel, for making the time to spend a few minutes with me and uh, have this interview together. So, Dr. Siegel, first of all, you are a clinical professor of psychiatry at UCLA um, School yes. of Medicine, and you are also the co-director of the Mindful Awareness Research Center, as well as the executive director of the Mindsight Institute. That's right. And you have written extensively for the uh, professional audience and also for the general public. And today, right now here, I would like to mention your two books which you co-authored uh, on parenting. So the first one being uh, Parenting from the Inside Out and your last book uh, on parenting, The Whole-Brained Child. So Yes, and I wrote Parenting from the Inside Out with Mary Hartzell and yes. I wrote The Whole-Brained Child with Tina Bryson. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, yes, yes that. And um, so... You will join our conference, our online parenting conference, and offer the keynote on parenting from the inside out. So my first question to you is, Dr. Siegel, you graciously accepted the invitation to take part to this uh, uh, endeavor of, uh, of mine uh, and sponsored uh, through the NBC Academy. So I would like to just hear what actually motivated, to, motivated you to join us. Well, you know, I think any opportunity to inform parents uh, and people who support parents uh, in the science of what we know creates the family environment that promotes stronger minds, more compassionate children, more resilient kids who can grow in this world will not only make the parenting experience more rewarding, but it will create a new generation of young adults who will be prepared to face the challenges uh, that are in our world today. So I feel very committed to doing whatever I can to reinforce these new discoveries of what it takes to uh, help children grow uh, in an optimal way. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, what I'm hearing and what, uh, what is my experience is, is that you are really, really committed to making a difference for families and, and, and new generations. So yes, and I think together we can really draw on science yeah. to make a difference. And, you know, the world is so um, different than it was when we all grew up that it's important to see how can we actually create a, an approach to parenting that will be the best for the kids for the future, not right. for the past we had, yes. but the kind of future that they may discover for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this field is really where we take all the different disciplines of science and we combine them together to make one approach. And, uh, you know, we have these basic books in the Norton series. We have three dozen textbooks for professionals, and I've written uh, books in the series and out of the series as well, The Developing Mind, for example. But we have a whole set of books, even the parenting books I've written, are all based on interpersonal yeah. neurobiology, this approach that combines all sciences into one perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Siegel, yes. So more on a personal note, um, you are uh, a father of two yes. children, and uh, your kids, you told me, are uh, 18 and 21. And, yes, 23. 23. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. 23. Yeah. And uh, so if you um, look at your own parenting journey, what would you say have been some key moments in mm. your own, you know, self-understanding or understanding of the relationship with your children, your growth as a parent? Yes. Well, that's a, a really important question for anyone to ask, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, you know, in my writings, even for professionals, but especially for parents, I always try to put the personal side in because even when you're filled with the science, it's important to realize we all have an inner subjective life 
and we all have our personal relationships, and those can inform us a lot. So in my parenting journey, um, I've actually written about a number of the moments that have been so challenging. And I think the first one to just state is that even if you're someone who studies this material or writes books about it or teaches about it, you can always find ways of continuing to grow and learn. Mm -hmm. So learning is a lifelong experience. And I think the the first lesson for me in in raising our son, our firstborn, uh, was that one should not feel like uh, you're, you're, um, you know, uh, at the end of your growth curve, that you're always open to growing and that the lesson is the most challenging moments can actually be the best moments for growth. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse Bless me. Bless you. Including sneezing when you need to sneeze. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so this opportunity to grow well is uh, something where you can reinterpret the challenging moments uh, mm-hmm. And excuse me, this is one challenging moment for me with my allergies. Uh, so you can actually approach these difficult moments in parenting as moments to actually grow in a different kind of way. Uh, so rather than see them as burdens, yeah. you see them as opportunities. And that's a certain mind shift that I had to learn yeah. early on as a young parent. I think the second thing that follows with that is that there is no such thing as perfect parenting, mm. but you can have the intention of making a repair when you've come to realize that you've made, oh, uh, and either you, whether you want to call it an error or a disconnection or you didn't approach the parenting the way if you had been more rested or more well-fed or less harried, yeah. less in a hurry, um, you might have done. So. Yeah. Going back to your child and acknowledging that there was a rupture in your connection, describing uh, what uh, happened to you in that moment in a brief way and asking for your child's uh, exploration for what happened, what they felt when you were yelling or when you looked terrified or terrifying, these can be extremely important. And so repair is an extremely important lesson for all of us that some parents don't know about. And so what they do is they try to pretend that the ruptures in their connection with their child uh, have not happened. Mm. And in pretending, it makes the child actually have a very difficult kind of attachment relationship because then the child also has to deny their own truth because you're denying the truth interpersonally. And that can lead to serious compromises to what you can call the coherence of a child's mind and the way the child understands life and understands relationships. So the second lesson is repair. Make a repair, 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 repair. We can't say it enough to remind parents about that. And then finally, I think a third major thing for me was, you know, learning about the brain um, was very helpful in being a parent because I could learn how to help shape my own brain's development because it develops across the lifespan and also develop my child's brain. And that's basically what the two books are about. Parenting from the inside out is about developing your own brain so that you can have an understanding of your own life. And the whole brain child is about uh, how to help your child's brain develop. And so those two taken together are a nice package as a gift to parents to take this very complex science, which I review in a book called The Developing Mind, Mm -hmm. and make it available for parents. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Siegel. So I want to go back to your second point, the repair. And uh, so I'm hearing that, yes, we are all humans, so we do make what we could consider mistakes, or somehow we don't always live fully in line with our values in, in, in awareness and choice. And so whenever that happens, go back to do the repair work. Uh, yes. Another aspect of this, uh, in my experience, and you know, having heard from from parents I I have worked with uh, through the years, I I have come to understand that for us parents, it can be a very vulnerable place to experience, uh, particularly guilt when we look back at ways in which we have behaved. 
uh, and even more so when our children are, you know, older. And so looking back through the years at some choices that we have made, and maybe now neuroscience or, you know, uh, interpersonal neurobiology is telling us that those choices might not have been uh, the choices that most contributed to the, you know, development of the brain and the integration of the different parts of the brain. So what are your words to parents when we experience those, this sense of guilt and sometimes even shame around our own parenting? Yes. Well, I think it's very important what you're saying um, and that we offer uh, this really open-armed approach to parents where we say, you know, this is the most challenging mm -hmm. uh, occupation anyone can have, raising children. It's challenging for many, many reasons. Um, some of them include just it's so personal to us. It's so emotional that it's sometimes hard to think clearly and sometimes hard to behave in a way that is, um, you know, ultimately going to be the best for the child. And that's just natural that because it's so emotional. Um, I think the second thing to say is that if a parent is feeling guilty, they need to understand that it's very natural to actually feel guilt. So they don't need to feel guilty about feeling guilty, <laughs> but they can try to go beneath the guilt and let the guilt be actually an opportunity to inspire them to deepen their understanding of what they feel guilty about. What was the nature of the interaction that they wish they had done differently? And then, you know, since I do work with, since I'm a therapist, I do work with even adult children and their parents, and they bring them back in. And so it's never too late to make that repair, repair. which helps people understand what happened and deepens the kind of relationship into one that we want it to be. So... But what I would say to a parent who feels guilty is let your guilt motivate you to understand deeper inside yourself and then go back to the person with whom the interaction happened that you felt guilty and try to make it better. Yeah. It's much, much better to have self-understanding and interactive repair than to sit around with guilt. Guilt doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do the other person any good. So to get beyond the paralyzing guilt we can feel and shame too that there's something defective about us right. and to move into that. what I found is helpful is understanding how the brain works and in particular how the social brain of two people, one brain interacting with another, how they communicate with each other. This can make people instead of feeling um, guilty, they can actually feel responsible mm -hmm. to go make a difference. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the brain, understanding the brain amazingly actually helps people lift themselves out of their guilt and motivates them to take action in a positive way. Yeah. I was so shocked. I go, I went to the brain because I'm a scientist also and I wanted to understand things. Yeah. But then when I was teaching the brain to my clients, my patients, the people in my classes, yeah. workshops, I found that them knowing about the brain actually helped them free themselves from paralyzing shame and guilt because yeah. they could say it wasn't my my um, fault, but it is my responsibility to go make things better. Yeah. Maybe my brain was affected by my childhood, but now it's my responsibility and I don't have to beat up on myself. I can go forward and make a reconnection yeah, yeah, yeah. and a repair. Yeah. So, Dr. Siegel, what I'm hearing is, well, this last piece about actually uh, – educating ourselves around uh, how the brain works can be very empowering in terms of self-understanding and also then on taking action to do the repair work you were mentioning also before. And to exactly. And to actually really hold our guilt and even possibly our shame as a wake-up call to look deeper inside and, and look at some, uh, some more of the life inside beyond this uh, uh, difficult intense emotions and learn something more about ourselves and also again to motivate us to go out and and do the repair work reconnect with the Absolutely. person yeah we we might have not had the interaction that we were hoping or yeah, made some choices around that we were hoping we 
now in hindsight <laughs> we realize yeah we we might yeah, have exactly, chosen differently exactly. yeah 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 so well thank said you. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you dr siegel um i do have a couple more questions for you sure. so with you know all the years as a father as a, a clinician as a, a scientist what would be the core message that you would give to parents well, I think the core message has two, two basic parts to it. One is self-understanding on the parent's part is the best predictor of your child's attachment to you. Uh, and the attachment of your child goes on to give them the resilience, basically. So the first step of parenting is to understand yourself. What does that mean? That means understand where you've come from, how your own experiences of being parented have shaped you. Um, and to do this, we have a whole book called Parenting from the Inside Out, which actually teaches you how to do that. So it's not like I, we just say do it and there's no way to do it. There's a, there's a method to doing it. So that's the first thing. The second part of this core message is about your children, that at the heart of resilience is a process called integration. And integration is where you take separate things like left and right, for example, and you allow them to be different, but then you link them together. Integration in the brain would be like that as one example. Integration between us would be where I honor the differences between me and you. So you are different from me yeah. and I'm different from you. But then we have compassionate communication that links us. So an integrated relationship promotes health. An integrated brain promotes health. And so in the whole brain child, what you have is a step-by-step -step approach to helping your child develop an integrated life, integrated brain, integrated relationships. So ultimately, a vibrant, compassionate, resilient, creative, flexible mind comes from integration. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is uh, provide the steps that parents can take to help their children develop a, an integrated brain. And by the way, in terms of the first part of this, when you develop self-understanding, you're also developing an integrated brain in yourself. So integration is the single message, and we apply it within ourselves and within our children so that life becomes filled with health and vitality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Siegel. And you will share more about, yes, the uh, intrapersonal aspect of integration in your session, Parenting from the Inside Out, as your yes. keynote. Yes. Um, and so, hearing this this core message, what would be one piece of advice that you that you give to parents? One piece of advice would be to be relaxed about your parenting, but be intentional. Mm. Intentional means really think about these things we've talked about: how you can create more self understanding in yourself, more integration in your child. But be intentional about it. And it doesn't mean being really serious or all nervous or, you know, pressured. It's in many ways just the opposite. This is a map that lets you travel the pathway through parenting uh, with a direction, mm -hmm. not an absolute prescription for what you must do. It's more like a general direction. And the many, many parents who've given us feedback about the parenting from the inside out approach and the whole brain child approach, they're basically two sides of the same yeah. integration effort. Um, you know, it's very, it's beautiful because they mm -hmm. feel like they get a map and yet they feel they can bring their own personal creativity yeah. within the map. And that's really, really rewarding. And it's a wonderful thing to join with people uh, when they when they learn to take in that map and make it their own. Thank you, Dr. Siegel. So I am looking forward, obviously, your session and learning more uh, from you about Thank you. yes, yes, how to create more self-understanding as a parent and also how to be this, uh, as you said, relaxed yet intentional presence in uh, the life of my children. And of course, Absolutely. I hope that many, many parents will join us so that uh, yeah, they can also have some more. Um, not only tools, but also some more insights about yes. their own journey as as person and as uh, parents. So that would Dr. be wonderful. Yeah. Dr. Siegel, thank you so much for your time and for bringing it's all you bring into the world and uh, looking forward to your session. 
Thank, Thank you. you. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. See you soon. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye. Thank you.